Today, we're going to talk about five mistakes that we see people make all the time when buying an Akia in Japan. So people from all over the world reach out and ask us to help them find and purchase an Akia in Japan. I would say a majority, if not all people, make one of these mistakes that we're going to talk about today. So I hope this video will help you save a lot of time, money, and headaches when finding your dream house in Japan. If you're looking to buy a cheap Akia in Japan as a vacation home for you to stay, this video is for you. If you're looking to build a rental portfolio in Japan, you can watch this video. If you haven't done it already, be sure to hit the subscribe button. You'll be the first to know when new videos are released. Also, it'll help these videos reach out to more people who might need them. So it would mean a lot to me if you could take one second to hit the button. All right, so let's dive right in. Mistake number one, unreal realistic expectations. This is probably the most common mistake we see. Many people often have unrealistic expectations about the type of property they'll get with their budget. The headlines that say you can get a house for $500 are not entirely wrong, but misleading. Yes, you can find really cheap houses, especially in the most rural areas of Japan, but I don't think that's what most people want, even though they're extremely cheap. If you're getting a dirt cheap property, you're going to be paying for the inconvenience and poor condition. So unless you're buying the property for yourself, to live in and you plan to fix it on your own, you're not saving money. It'll actually cost you a lot more than buying a decent property in a better location and condition because you're essentially trading your time with money. If it's in an inconvenient area, you'll probably be spending a lot of time traveling back and forth grocery shopping every week. You'll be spending a lot of time doing your own renovation. But my guess is that you probably save more money by using that time to focus on earning more money so you can pay someone else to do the job much better and faster for you. The problem is in a remote area, it'll be very difficult to find renovation companies and will be more costly. If that doesn't sound good to you, you'll need to change your expectations. Expect that you won't find a decent property in a decent location for $500 or even $5,000. Mistake number two, location. Let's dive deeper into the topic of the location of Akia. As the saying goes, the three most important factors in real estate are location, location, and location. You can renovate the interior or exterior of the house or demolish a house and build an entirely new house, but you cannot change the location of your property. So choosing the right location for you is absolutely critical. If you want convenience, you'll be paying for it. The closer you are to a train station, the more expensive the property tends to be. People value convenience because you get to save time and time is money. If you want to take public transportation to get to your property, you want to buy something that's relatively close to a train station. On the other hand, if you're looking for a similar property, but keeping your costs low is your priority, you can't expect to find something cheap near a train station. You will either have to get something in bad condition and pay for renovation or something that's far from the train station you probably have to drive to get there or take a taxi or at least bike in my younger days I used to value convenience over everything else. When I lived in the heart of Tokyo, I lived just a few minutes outside of a station or close enough to bike to work. I paid a lot of money to rent a tiny studio apartment. Even when we were living in Tokyo after we had our first child a few years ago, we lived just a few minutes from the station. It was super convenient, but we paid over 60% more in rent than we do now. And right now, we live in a suburb of Yokohama. We have a more spacious and a cheaper place. But here's a kicker. It takes about 30 minutes to get to the nearest train station by walking. But we rarely take the train, and if we do, we either bike or take a taxi to the station. So it works great for our current lifestyle. So don't make the mistake of choosing the wrong location for you. You need to know what exactly you want and look for properties accordingly. If convenience is really important for you, you're gonna have to pay for it. As a rule of thumb, the cheaper the place, the more remote it will be. And therefore, few renovation companies will be available. Mistake number three, property condition. Speaking of renovation companies, let's talk about property conditions. A lot of people make the mistake of underestimating the cost of renovation. In general, the cheaper the house, the worse the construction. Akia means vacant property. Vacant properties may have been unoccupied for a long time, leading to potential issues such as structural damage, pest infestations, or mold growth. If there's any doubt about the property's condition, I recommend conducting a thorough inspection using a professional property inspector. I would say for most people, the Akia sweet spot is about 10 million yen in the countryside near Tokyo and about 8 million yen in the countryside near other major cities. If you buy a 10 million yen Akia, you probably only need about 
1 million yen in renovations. A 9 million yen house probably requires 1.75 million yen in renovations. An 8 million Akia will probably need about 2.5 million yen in renovations. The point is that you're not really saving that much money by getting a cheaper place because you'll likely need to do more renovations. Mistake number four, Akia banks. If you're only using Akia banks to search for Akia, you're making a huge mistake. Akia banks are essentially a list of available properties in their municipalities. Every municipality in Japan usually has an Akia bank and those programs are run by the government. From my personal experience, Akia banks are not easy to work with. The biggest reason is that they're not incentivized to sell these Akia the way real estate agents are. So the process is often very complex. With real estate agents, it's a straightforward transaction. They want to sell the houses on their listings as much as you want to buy them because more sales means more commission for them. It's a business. Akia banks don't get a commission by selling a house on their listing. They're motivated by helping the sellers find the right buyers to move into the shrinking town. The biggest motivation is to revitalize the dying community. So they usually want to make sure they're bringing in the people who are likely to follow the community standards and help revitalize the community, whatever that means. In other words, it usually takes a lot more time and effort to buy an Akia through an Akia bank. I did a whole episode on my visit to an Akia bank, so you can watch this video after finishing this. So don't make the mistake of just searching through Akia banks. Make sure you search conventional real estate websites like At Home, Sumo, and Homes. If listings have made it to these websites, that means the seller is serious enough to consult real estate agents to sell their property, which is a good sign. You can still find great deals on these websites. You just need to act quickly because good deals don't last long. So be sure to spend time looking at these conventional websites to look for Akia. Mistake number five, local support. This is probably the biggest mistake we see people make. It's not getting local support. Even if you're familiar with real estate in your home country and you might have a spouse, family member, or a friend who speaks Japanese, not getting proper local support can cost you much more than not getting help. I'm not talking about just hiring a local translator who knows very little about real estate. You want someone who understands the local market and speaks Japanese and English to be the guide for you. In the US, long distance investing has become very popular with investors who can't find great deals in their neighborhood. For example, investors in California started to invest in more affordable states and people all over the country have rental properties in different US markets. It's much easier to do this in the US because it's within the same country so people understand the culture and speak the same language. In Japan, most real estate agents property managers and contractors don't speak English and probably don't understand your culture. It's nothing against foreign people. It's just how things are here in Japan. So you want to partner with someone who can navigate through these cultural nuances to find and buy a good property for you. One of the services we offer includes negotiating with the seller or the seller's agent. We've saved millions of yen for our clients by successfully negotiating the price with the sellers. And if you want to learn how to do that on your own, we have a very comprehensive course, Japan REI Bootcamp. I'll include the link in the description. There you have it. That was an episode on the five mistakes to avoid when buying an Akia in Japan. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're interested in learning more about everything you need to know about real estate investing in Japan, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you won't miss out on new episodes. And don't forget to download the free guide, How to Buy a Cheap House in Japan as a Foreigner, and watch this video next for more. See you in the next one.